Welcome to our tutorial on creating a chat GPT clone using react. In this beginner friendly guide, we will walk you through the process of building your own AI powered chatbot similar to chat GPT. Using simple language and step by step instructions, you will learn how to harness the power of react to create an interactive and engaging chat interface. Just bring your enthusiasm and curiosity. By the end of this tutorial, you will have a solid understanding of react development and be equipped to build your own innovative projects. Let's dive in and bring your chat GPT clone to life. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. But before we begin, just a quick info for you. If you are a professional who wants to switch career with software engineering by learning from the experts, then try giving a shot to Simply Learn's postgraduate program in full stack web development. Accelerate your career as a software developer through this postgraduate program in full stack web development course in collaboration with Caltech CTME. In just few months, you will learn modern coding techniques in bootcamp level intensity and gain all you need to be a full stack technologist. The link in the description box should navigate to the home page where you can find a complete overview of the program being offered. All right, so this is our Visual Studio. Now we can do the coding thing for creating the chat GPT. All right, so first of all, you'll have to create the React app. First of all, you'll have to write the command npx create React app, then my app, as you can see. Then after that, you can cd to your drive and then you can do the command that npm start. And that's what we did at localhost 3001, as you can see, it is running. Now, next thing, what we'll have to do is we'll have to install some dependencies. So let's do that, all right. So here, what we'll do is we'll install npm install openai. Two dependencies are there, you can install that. All right, so I think it's done. The other one is npm install axios. So npm install axios is for like simplifying the network and making the API requests. So that's why we'll have to install this as well. npm install, excuse, all right. All right, now we will start by creating a component. So let's create a new file. Let's name it as header.js. First of all, we'll work on the header component. So here we can import react from react. All right, const header. So here we are creating this component function. So first I'll write some part of the code, then I'll explain to you guys. So first of all, we'll create a div, here also div. All right, now let's name this div class name header. All right, now inside this div, we'll create another div. Class name, let's say. header let's keep it short only that's not complicated all right header let's say sub div all right so these are the two divs the outer div is header and the inside div is header sub div all right let's do this now inside both of these div, let's give some space because we are going to create something. All right, after giving some space. All right, now we'll create a p tag inside this p tag. Let's name it, class name is header sub text all right now inside this p that is the paragraph tag we'll write what we want to display above the 
on the heading basically so let's write something let's say i am chat gpt an ai language model developed by open ai All right, after writing this, this is the outer div, this is the inner div. Then we are gonna use this bracket thing. This is for the space only. All right, so this is what we'll have to write in the div. Let's put enter in it so that it is visible. All right, so this is it. Now, now I'm gonna explain to you guys what we did in this one. Now here inside the nested div, we will create an H1 element and we'll write something like chat GPT or chat GPT clone, something like that. So we'll write h1 so we want it to like display at the header so let's do that chat gpt will write all right so we can also give a class name all right so after that there's a br tag and then there is a header subtext class name that is p so inside this p that is paragraph tag we have written something that will also display at the header only then we have closed this div bars and yeah we have to export it as well so we'll write export default header we haven't really done much in this one all right so this is our header also we can also add an logo image or something like that near this chat gpt all right so let's do that so this is the image source so this is the image you can select your own image from google or from elsewhere so this is the alternate this is the name of that that is the logo image so now we'll have to import it as well you can just download the image from Google and paste it in the folder of this GPT and then you can use it. All right. So import then the name of the image. The name of the image is chat GPT logo. All right. From right dot slash dot SVG. All right. So we are done with this header. But we forgot one thing, we'll have to import it in app as well. So for that, let's go to app, which is our main thing. So you can just remove this, remove this as well. All right, so here the name of the component, header is the name of the component. So as you can see, this is, I am a chat GPT and AI language model developed by OpenAI. It is visible, but let's say now we want to make a text area and a button as well. So we'll create another component for that. So let's go to SRC and create a new file. And let's name that file as chat form.js. Make sure if you are making a component, start with a capital letter. All right, so this is chat form.jsx. All right, now in this one, again, we will import React from React, that is the React library that I've done. Import React from React. All right. Now again, const chat form 
that is the name of the component all right so this is the one all right now here we will write div first of all let's name this class name as form div as we have to create that now inside this div we'll create a text area so write text area text now inside this text area that is the first tag we'll write rows i'll explain you why we are writing this first let's write it rows 5 then there is class name. Let's name this class as form control. All right, then there is placeholder. And in the placeholder, let's write ask me. All right, so this is it. Now after this text area, we'll create a button as well. Now inside this button, we'll put like generate response. We'll also add the functionality afterwards, but let's write this first of all. And let's name it. We'll name it. What should we name it? Form button let's write it form button all right form button now the div is closed all right now this is another component that we'll have to export so let's write export default chat form all right now here in app.js we'll again go and include this component the name of the component is chat form so when we'll add the component this import statement will automatically gets imported but sometimes it doesn't so if in your pc it is not happening then you'll manually have to type this import chat from like the name of the component from dot slash wherever it is in your folder you can like do so you might have to do write this manually all right now let's see if it is working or not so as you can see here ask me and this is the generate response so this is the text area and this is the button that we want to generate all right now let's get back to the code now we will create some other components and we'll add the functionality one by one but before we proceed to the next component let's first understand this chat form gsx all right so the rest of the part is pretty understandable as we can see but the thing here that is the text area the text area is a bit confusing i can understand so the line starts so let me uh, make you understand from the beginning a little bit so this line starts from the jsx blocks that describes the component structure so it's a div element with the class name form div as we can see form div so this div will be the root element of this component wrapping everything that the component returns so inside the jsx copy code like the text area as we can see we have rows five class name form control placeholder ask me we have written and then we have closed this tag so inside the div there's a text area element as we can see now this text area is where users can input text it has several attributes rows class name so rows defined sets the visible number of lines in the text area so we have limited to five then class name so class name is form control it's it is basically for css then placeholder it is that is ask me thing that we want it to display so it provides basically a placeholder on the text that appears in the text area as we have just saw so yeah after that uh, there's a normal div tag that we have closed so this is what chat form.js is now we will create a answers.jsx component which will handle the question and answer that will be displayed on the screen all right so let's proceed with that for that we will create another component and we will name it answers dot jsx all right let's start 
answer sec now we'll write return in the return we'll create devs multiple devs actually dev class name let's say answer div all right then there is another div class name answer sub div all right so two divs there are now after answer sub div there is right then we'll name it hr line so this is basically an enclosing tag all right i'll explain it to you what we are doing first just let's observe it all right here's another div so this div is answer container all right In one more day we'll create and we'll name it answer section all right now we'll use a p tag p and class name question you close it for now let's write who are the who are your founders right then another p tag so here would be the answer I'll explain it to you step by step so you don't have to worry. First, let's just observe it. So, let's just copy something. Open, let's write something random here. Open AI was founded by a group of prominent individuals. all right so after that there's a p tag and then we can create another div so for this div we will name it let's say copy icon now inside this div Okay, FA solid FA copy. All right, and then there's divs that are being closed. All right, so there are a lot of spaces. Let's just eliminate these spaces. All right, now export default answer sec all right so now let's understand this code first of all so basically this react component named answer sec is designed to display a list of messages each with an input question and its corresponding answer 
So first of all, we have to import React from React that we forgot. So we'll write import React from React. All right. So this line will import the, the React library. After that, so after that, there are multiple devs that we will be using further in this project. So first is answer div. That is the class name of the first div. So this line starts the JSX structure with the div element that has the class name of answer div. And this div serves as the root element of the component. Then another div that's uh, within the root div that is answer sub div. So this is the nested structure might be used for styling. It will be used for organizational purposes. Then this HR line, here it is, yeah, HR line, the name of the class is HR line. So HR tag it is. So I want to let you know guys that this line places a horizontal rule element in the component used as a separator basically. All right. So yeah, the rest of the code. All right. So we have exported this. Now let's import it. All right. So, so as you can see, where the founders, this is being written. So what we wanted is being written. Now let's move on to the next steps. All right. So the next step is getting an API from OpenAI. That is the official OpenAI. So openai.com we can go so here you can log in all right so now we'll click on api because you want the api only now you can go to here and here we can see api keys so from here we can generate an api key if you don't have an premium account that is you haven't taken the subscription then you can just log in and pay the uh, enter the credential details as well and then also you can get the apis for that we can get this create new secret key we'll click on that and then we'll come over here and we can name anything we want my key chat gpt key whatsoever you want after naming it we just have to click on create a secret key so once the secret key is created that is the api is created you here is the option of copy just copy it and save it into you can save it to notepad or anywhere else because once it is generated then it, it get vanishes so you just have to save it and then you can use it all right so this is how you can use the api keys make sure that it is not expired you can check that by going to usage and check then only the api will work if it is not expired and you have the credits all right so all right we are back to the code and now we will go to the chat form.jsx here we'll have to add some use state because we'll have to manage some state over here so for that, let's do one thing. We'll have to import first of all. We'll write import. So to use use state, you'll have to import it first of all. This is how you will import it. Import use state from React. All right, as we can see. Now we'll have to do some use of state. So what we'll do is first of all, there's a chat form as we can see and const input text. So this is what we are writing that we want to manage over here. So input text, let's name it set input text, we'll write. All right. So, commas over here. All right, next we will assign the value of text area field to the state and establish an on change event to keep the state updated whenever there are changes to the input value. So, for that, this is the text area. So, this is that we have written previously. Now, here we will also have to include some more things like after placeholder we can include this value so all right so we'll write inside the jsx we'll write input text this is the input text that we are adding all right so this is the initial value basically and this is the initial value that is here 
so basically this is the initial value and this is what that is being displayed and this is the basically set input text is the updater so this will update this and this is what that will display so the initial value is this and this is what is going to display so this is value and value is going to display now we'll have to set the value that means we'll have to update it as well so for that we will include some on change event so that's what we're going to do we'll write on change fyi if you are not understanding this part you'll have to have a look at react hooks so using inside react hooks there is a use state just get, go through it you'll have a clear idea what i'm going to teach you and what i was explaining all right so on change so now inside this jsx what we'll do is that is an event then set input text that is the updater basically event that is e dot tie dot target dot value all right so this is how we are going to update it so on change this event will target the value so this is the updater so this is updating this value basically that is being displayed here all right now we will create an on click event so let's give a br first of all let's give some space all right so as we know this button on click will create so let's do that so in this on click what we'll do is inside the jsx let's do a function let's write a function response generate input text comma set input text all right so what we are doing is we are creating an on click event to load a function whenever the submit button is clicked this method will create in the app.js and passed as a props into chat form.jsx component with the input text and the set input text values as arguments so we will pass this to the chat form.jsx basically so here response generate as you can see now next we will create an environment variable in a newly created dot env file and store the open ai key inside it then you can make the file in the root folder of your application and store the key to the variable so let's name the variable you can name anything and let's create right dot env all right now here i will paste my api key so here i have pasted the api key and stored into the variable now i'll use this variable all right now we will come to the app.js here we will import the configuration and open ai classes from the open ai package so these classes are necessary to configure and interact with open ai api so we'll write import i've started doing this in chat form component so we'll go to the app.js yes here we will do here we will import those classes we'll write import configurations open ai api from open ai so yeah so this is the thing that we'll have to import now we will proceed with creating a method within the app.js itself to handle the complete process of interaction with the open ai api so we'll start now here we will create a configuration object using the configuration class then the api key property of the configuration object is set using process.env dot the variable that is being assigned to the api key so this allows the api key to be stored securely in an environment variable also we'll have to make sure to set the environment variable with your actual open ai api so let's just do that all right so we'll start with it first of all uh, inside before this uh, return we'll have to do all right so const 
configuration new configuration this is from this library that we have included right API key underscore open AI. React underscore app underscore open AI API key. All right. All right. I'll explain to you guys what I'm doing. All right, so this response generate function that I just wrote, I'll explain to you. So here we have defined a function named response generate, which takes two parameters, that is input text and set input text. So inside this function, we define an object named options with various properties. As you can see, prompt, model, max tokens, etc. So basically options is the object and these are the properties. So first is prompt. So prompt property, contains a string template with the text complete this sentence input text so this input will use that that input text it's a prompt to be sent to the open AI api for generating a response basically then this model so this model is basically the spec i repeat so this model specifies the version of gpt to be used that is the gpt model version to be used in this case, it's uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo. All right. Then there is max tokens. So max tokens is 50. It specifies the maximum number of tokens, that is words, in the generated response. Then N. N specifies the number of responses to generate. Here it is set to 1. Then there is stop. Then this stop specifies the stopping condition for the generated response. All right. Now, after that, we can see uh, there is let complete options object so this object we have used a spread operator over here here we have created complete option object by spreading the properties of the options object and overriding the prompt property with the input text parameter so this is the prompt and this is the input text parameter so the complete options object is what will be passed to the open ai api for generating the response in summary the code defines function response generate that prepares options for sending a request to the OpenAI API for generating response based on the provided input text. The functional, I repeat, the function dynamically adjusts the prompt in the options based on the input text received as a parameter. Now we will create messages and set messages with an initial value of an empty array. We will create basically a state named messages and set messages with an initial value of empty array so for that let's create it all right so const new state empty all right now the array that is this array will serve as a container for storing questions and answers so this array will be then passed as a prop to the answer section component that we have created all right so the next thing that i wrote is const till this so now i'm going to explain you what i wrote so basically this const response await open ai dot completions dot create complete options so this line of code will asynchronously send a request to open ai to generate a response based on the provided complete options so the await keyword indicates that the code will wait for the response from api before proceeding further once the once i repeat once the response is received it will be stored in the variable response so this is what this line means all right 
so now i'll make you understand the other half of the code as well so for that we have a conditional check if we can see as you can see if is there so if is the conditional check so we have written if response dot choices dot length which verifies if there's at least one choice that is response received from the open ai api so we have written response dot choices dot length so it is checking if there's at least one choice response received from the open ai api if there is at least one choice response that is if there is at least one choice available we update the state of messages and use i repeat we update the state of messages using set messages so this is the set messages so we will update the message using the set set messages function we add a new object to the existing array of messages so this object contains two properties questions which holds the input text and answer which holds the generated response obtained from the response dot choices dot text all right this is the this is what i'm talking about this will hold the input text and answers which holds the generated response obtained from this this was uh, this will uh, hold the answer basically so we use the spread operator as we can see messages to include previous messages in the array so this ensures that previous messages are not lost when updating the state after updating messages we clear the input text basically by setting it to an empty string using the set input text and empty so this will clear up the input text all right along with it we forgot to do one thing we'll have to pass the props to these components as well so let's write response generate and here we'll write response generate we'll pass this to chat form and here we'll have to pass the sorry and here we'll have to pass the messages all right so as we have passed the prop now we'll have to go to the answer set component so that we'll make sure that it will receive the props value from app.js and then we'll use the map function of the javascript so let's do that so as you can see over here we use the jsx brackets and then messages all right now here we will use the map function so in the map function now the question is where should we use that so so we'll use under the answer section so we'll use the jsx bracket first of all we'll remove this all right so So inside these brackets we'll use all right so messages dot map so messages is that we have received as a prop we'll map this and how to do that like this only inside the function this function arrow function value we are passing and index we are passing all right now here we'll write dev class name dev class name let's name it answer no let's not do that let's do one thing from here we will include it so i wrote the code now inside this key we'll write index i'll explain it to you what we are doing over here then here we'll pass value dot input then value dot answer all 
All right. So this is we are doing is mapping basically. So this part of the code is a JSX expression that iterates over an array of messages that we have received. This is the messages. All right and generates JSX elements dynamically based on each message. So messages dot map and index is there. So it will generate the messages on each message. So first as we can see messages dot map value index. So we use the map method on the messages array to iterate over each message. For each message we execute a function that takes two parameters value that is the current message object and the index. The index of the current message in the array, basically. Then, as we can see, div class name is there. So, as we can see, div class name, answer section. As you can see, first class name, is answer section. So, as we can see, key index is there. So, now I'll explain this part. For each message, we generate div element within the class name, answer section. We assign a unique key prop to each div element using the index to ensure efficient rendering and updating of the elements right after that we can see there is question so inside each div we include a p element so with class name question so this p that is a paragraph element displays the input text of the message it will display that so value dot input representing the questions asked so whatever we will put whatever we will input that will display so the paragraph tag element displays the generated i repeat so the paragraph tag element displays the input text of the message that representing the questions asked all right now this is the answer class name paragraph tag so this paragraph element displays the generated answer value dot answer as we can see so this will uh, generate the display the generated answer corresponding to the input question all right so that's why we have used the map method to iterate over each question and answer. So we are done, but there are some errors that we need to figure out. All right. So uh, make sure to include this use state that is the hooks hooks use state. Make sure to include it in app.js and also this import OpenAI from OpenAI. So the previous uh, configuration that we have uh, imported is not working so we have tried this one import open ai from open ai and instead of writing this code we will be writing some other code so now let's just have a look at it because this code seems to be not working this is showing some error so let's try some other code let me just write it down and then i'll explain to you guys open ai Right. Dot env dot react score app that is the variable where our key is stored. So basically, we'll have to write it open ai underscore i key. All right, so this is the name of that variable now changes allow browser true right so yeah so basically this code initializes an instance of an open api i repeat of open ai's api with an api key allowing access to open ai's services such as generating responses using ai models the option dangerously allow browser equals true enables the users i repeat enables the usage of api in a browser environment despite potential security risks so this is what this code means now we have corrected the all the errors and all as we have included the right libraries and we have also included the css you can do css on your own like it's specific I repeat like it is very specific to person to person but if you want the css we can we will attach the source code in the description you can find the css and other code links over there so make sure to check it now let's have a look how our website is looking let's see all right so let's have a look at it 
as you can see we have added the css made this round and done some other css animations so let's ask some questions the capital of india is new delhi as we can see all right now let's ask another question all right again we'll ask what is chat gpt how many states are there in india there are 20 28 states and 8 union territories okay Polymorphism refers to the ability of an object or method to mean multiple forms, behaviors, depending on the context in which it is used. So yeah, it is working fine as we can see. So this is how you can create your own chat GPT. In this video, we have created this chat GPT from scratch. You can create your own chat GPT by referring to this video. Thank you for joining us today to explore how to create a chat GPT clone using VM. Remember, practice makes you perfect. Keep coding, stay curious, and unleash your creativity. Farewell, and may your projects be as innovative as your aspirations. With that, we have come to the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I hope it really helped you all. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and keep learning. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts. Choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.